this amazing box will keep your data safe, make media viewing a treat, and possibly even grant you some wishes. Isn't that just the normal PC? No. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Die Trying. Why buy when you can make? I'm Patrick Norton. And I'm Michael Hand. Hey, we love to make cool and useful things, and we wanted to bring you along for the ride. So this week, we're gonna show you how to... Protect your precious data and share your music and movies around the house. Yes, and to do that, we're recycling an old PC to make a NAS. A free NAS. Free NAS. Free yes. as in speech, free as in you don't have to pay for it, and free as in really, really cool. So NASs are network attached storage. This is where you take a PC or a dedicated device, you attach it to your network, and then all of your different devices around the house can access that data. So sure, you could set up an iTunes collection using your PC or Mac, right. but a NAS is way easier in that it's all in one place and you can use it to like back up your data, stuff like that. It's, a, it's just trust us. If, if, if you don't have to worry about somebody in the house downloading a vicious virus and wiping out your iTunes collection, life is a little bit better. Yeah. Now, it may sound extreme, but nobody used to have routers, cable modems, hubs, or computers at home either. And you can definitely buy a NAS. This is a Drobo. It's a classic, sort of easy to operate one. This awesome thing is an oh, IOSafe N2 uh, Synology software. It's waterproof, it's fireproof. You can actually like attach it to your wall and keep people from dragging it away. So yeah. if you're in a flood zone and don't have a good upload speed, these things are amazing. Now we probably can't make our own fireproof and waterproof case like that. Not today. But we can show you how to make your own NAS and it'll do the same sort of functions. So first hardware, we kind of talked about it. In this case, we have an old Dell Inspiron. I think this was... 2006, 2007. Yeah, and even then it wasn't that great of a PC. So if you're doing a base install, you don't need the most amazing hardware. Right. If you have a faster PC with three or four gigabytes of RAM, you can use something called ZFS, or I want to say like the Zettabyte file system. Yeah. ZFS is amazing, because a bunch of genius computer engineers at Sun a long time ago got together and said, all file systems suck. We are going to make the perfect file systems. That's not what they said. They used much more sophisticated language. But ZFS is really cool, because what it allows you to do is you have a bunch of hard drives. You spread your data across the hard drive, and if a hard drive dies, what ZFS has is something called parity data stored across the drives. So when you put a new drive in, it can reconstruct, rebuild the data that was lost on the drive that died, and restore everything. It's really, yeah. really cool. So it's like a super raid almost? It's a RAID without the right hole. It's like RAID 5 without the right hole, and if you understand that, you probably don't need us to teach you how to run FreeNAS, <laughs> which actually brings us to something we should talk about. FreeNAS is software you can download. Now, if I look at you and say, so you're gonna have to burn the ISO to the drive and you have a blank expression, you need to do one of two things. You might wanna step back and go a little on the basics. So, first thing to look at, <laughs> yeah, then get a Drobo. Um, but, <laughs> If you do know how to burn disk using Disk Utility on a Mac, or we yeah. like image burn on PC. If you're willing to learn, actually both the Mac and the PC now have tools to create ISOs, but if you don't know how to do it, figure out if you can burn this and set up your computer so it'll boot off the disk or thumb drive you've created. If you can do that, I'm pretty sure you can build a free NAS. One last hardware thing we want to talk about before we start installing free NAS is drives. Yeah. I don't recommend scrounging whatever drives you have laying around your house. <laughs> well, it will technically work. You don't know how safe your data is going to yeah. be. So we want to do what? Green drives? Uh, Western Digital Reds are kind of the ideal drive for okay. sort of a RAID or NAS uh, storage. Greens will work. Uh, I would do Western Digital Reds or Greens. Those would be my top two choices, Reds being the top choice. Um, I would probably get at least a terabyte of drive because when you create the ZFS, right, it uses about half the drives. I think I have 12 terabytes in my other system mm -hmm. and I get about six terabytes of places to write data. The other six terabytes is reserved. Just redundancy and yeah. making sure that it can reconstruct those. Right. Drives. I would say, you know, you want at least three drives to use ZFS, four would be better, five would be outstanding if you have that many SATA ports inside of your machine, but start with three or four drives. I would say now, given how cheap they are, at least two or three terabytes. So, we have the drives in. Okay. We're ready to install. Okay. So, install process. Painful. Painful? <laughs> so easy. <laughs> you boot your free NAS, you hit enter three times, your machine's up and running. Great. Once it's rebooted, it's going to give you uh, a bit of information called an IP address at the bottom of the page, right? It's going to be like 192.168.1. I don't know, 237, let's say, for example. So you're at your computer, you sit down, 
you're going to need that IP address we gave you. In our case, it's 192.168.1.232. When you hit enter, you're going to open up the free NAS window. This is essentially the console setup screen. And you see this over here in the corner. The alert means that FreeNAS is trying to tell you something. In this case, it's pretty important. They want you to change the password for the admin user. What does that exciting thing mean? It means essentially anybody right now who types in this IP address can change all of the settings in your FreeNAS, including erasing it. Uh, and it's actually pretty easy to do, so you should do that immediately. So we're going to go over here to account and the admin accounts, and we're going to change the admin user because the username is admin. So just for fun, we're going to go die trying because none of you are going to sneak into our network. And because I'm weird, I like to name things by splitting them up. We're going to change that admin user. And let's change the password. The password is going to be something. And that's going to change our root password as well. That means we have just locked this box down. So. Now we've locked down this web interface so that if we enter that number again, well, if we log out and enter that number again, look, it's all happy now. It's got a green light. So if we log out and reload this, uh, we'll have to type in our password uh, and our admin name, our username. Next thing you want to do is actually create some users. Uh, and this is pretty simple. You go over to the left-hand column again, the sidebar, you're going to hit Add Users. Now, if it's just you, you can keep things pretty simple. The user ID 1001, uh, this is going to be Patrick. Primary group, home directory, it's going to ask us for the name. And I'm going to type in Patrick Norton. And my email address. And I'm going to make myself uh, a member of the uh, wheel auxiliary group. Now, if you have somebody say, whoops, look at that kids, I forgot to put in a password. And let's try that one more time. There we go, now it's happy. All right, Michael's just stepped in, so let's create a user for Michael. We're gonna do something a little different with this one uh, outside of calling you the Palm Dalian. Twitter.com slash Palm I never post. Skippy. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. You, you've posted several times uh, in the several years we've been working together. <laughs> and instead of giving you the super cool guy all access wheel, we are going to give you the no groups. Oh. group. Well, essentially we're going to lock you down and prevent you from destroying everything that we love that's stored on this drive. But that's what I love to do. Yeah, that's exactly why. If you have a, you know, people who are prone to erasing things in terrible ways, this is a good way to set that up. So, so I'm given the permissions that I'm explicitly given. Whoa. <laughs> I think I just actually gave you all the permissions. Uh, you know, it's funny, right? So we talk about stuff like root access and, you know, we can go down here, there's a shell and I can double check to make sure um, we're connected to the internet so we can load plugins later on. And look, we've got that. And we should tell you about our, our sponsor. If you want to learn more about sort of Linux and FreeBSD and Unix, um, go to lynda.com slash DIY. And what you're going to find there is this incredible set of, uh, well, it's a free trial, by the way, uh, unlimited access uh, to lynda.com for seven days, and they're our sponsor. But if you want to be like, I want to learn about, you know, programming uh, or bash scripting is what we're looking at right now. Um, Scott Simpson has actually recorded a video tutorial, and it's incredible. It gets you into what's going on with the commands uh, inside the shell. If you wanted to learn about, let's see, Photoshop. How about Photoshop? Software, Photoshop, 274 different tutorials on Photoshop. This is pretty serious. There's a lot of really good stuff inside of here. Oh, Burt Monroy, I love Burt Monroy. Um, you can actually check it out at lynda.com slash DIY and uh, you'll be supporting the show and learning lots. And there's just a really broad array of topics that they cover. I highly recommend you check it out. I just used it to learn speed grade actually. Really? Yeah. Dude. You're always ahead of the curve. <laughs> so we've created our users. We probably should sit down and uh, and set up the storage on this, right? So it uh, doesn't really matter where you click, but I'm gonna go to the ZFS Volume Manager. 
just to be really original, I'll do die trying. I like to drag, there we go, we're gonna use all of our space. So the overhead, the overhead, the bite, the vig, in order to be able to like save this drive if it dies, or this drive if it dies, um, they take a little bit off the top. So we've got 12 terabytes of drives in here. You get to use about six terabytes for that storage. In exchange, you get this, you know, the ability to recover uh, the data that was on this drive if it gets erased. You know, this is the optimal configuration for the number of drives we had. I'm very pleased that they like our selection. And when you hit add volume, you will have your brand spanking new chunk O storage. So this is our volume that we have created. So we've got our accounts set up, we've got our storage set up. Is it time to share? Is it time to like be nice like a kindergartner? Yeah, so right now we have just one big drive pool right. that we can share. Mm -hmm. So we, okay, so we can actually subdivide. Do we want to subdivide? Let's go into our volumes. Um, Let's just keep it one huge thing. But okay. If we wanted to, in under create a ZFS data set, that's kind of how you create right. folders or partitions on that drive. So if I have like one chunk of data that is a playground for the Palm Dalian, where you can put your data up there, you can back up your data there, but you can't touch any of the rest yeah, of the data. Yeah, that's in the that's really easy. You can set permissions on those data sets so that only I can see them or I can't see them, right. stuff like that. So uh, if you're an all Apple house, AFP shares are probably the way to go, but we're gonna mix Windows and Apple and everything else environments. So we're gonna add a SIFS share and we're gonna name it DIY Tryon. And we have to create a path that basically tells it where it gets to go and we should be good to go. And when I do this, I basically, uh, set it up so that anybody can get onto this that's onto my network. So that's why we talked about creating data sets and locking things down with permissions. I should hit OK. And something really fun should happen right about now. If I go into doo -doo 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 -doo, network and so at this point, we can now actually start uploading files, writing files to this. You can log into it with multiple machines. So what you're seeing right now is I'm uploading some music and movie files from another machine. And of course, they become available in this shared drive we've let everybody access to. Um, there's a lot of other stuff going on inside of FreeNAS uh, that we could spend hours and hours walking you through this. Plugins are pretty awesome. And this is a list of plugins that allow you to add additional uh, features like BitTorrent, CrashPlan, uh, sets it up so that you can remote back up your FreeNAS to remote servers through the CrashPlan, either you know servers you own or servers that they own. Uh, DLNA and UPnP or Unplug and Play allows you uh, to give devices like set-top boxes and HDTVs access to the data that's on the FreeNAS. Plex Media Server, um, if you know what Plex is, you should be excited right about now. Uh, it's really, really good stuff. You basically just select the plugin you want to install, install, and you have to configure the information on that. Services tells you what's actually running inside of the box. Um, right now we've got SIFS turned on, that's what's doing our file sharing, allows to upload. Smart uh, is the hard drive monitor. Uh, you know, SSH, uh, Dynamic DNS, if you wanted to be able to remotely access this anywhere you travel, uh, you would use Dynamic DNS unless you have a static IP address, but if you know that much, you're probably not looking for us for help to configure this. Uh, anything else we should touch on before we go, Michael? The only thing I can think is in plugins, once you have them configured, the only thing that didn't make sense to me is that you have to go into the jails tab and then specifically share the data with the plugin because they're very locked down. That's why they're in jails. They're locked down so they can't access anything unless you specifically give them that data. That's important. Yeah, so if you're wondering, why doesn't my DNLA have any Why can't I see any of my songs? Yeah, that, that's probably why. Cool, so let's try playing something since we spent all that time transferring media over. So we're gonna go to our network, and we should probably get a little more sophisticated in how we're handling this, but right now let's go to music. Oh, I don't wanna grow up, definitely. Should have launched it with QuickTime. All right. Now obviously there's a lot more inside of this you can play with. We suggest you go to the ever so awesome freenas.org and take advantage of all of the wisdom and wit in the community. Um, 
they've actually done a pretty good job of helping people kind of figure out what's going on in the documentation. Uh, what we've given you is just the smallest, tiniest taste. In fact, I suspect we'll get a lot of email at DIY try at revision3.com telling us what we did wrong and how to fix it. If you've got questions, do us a favor, email us dietrian at revision3.com. Back to the workshop. Awesome, so we have a working FreeNAS build. We can stream media. Yes. Now what? Well, there's a lot of stuff, right? You can set up your machines to back up to it. You can use snapshots to take pictures of your ZFS uh, shares and basically back those up so you can actually back up wow. your backups, which is really, really cool. But all of that is for a future episode of Die Trying. And where should people look for future episodes? Go to dietrying.com or revision3.com slash dietrying. And do us a favor, email us with your ideas, dietrying at revision3.com. I'm Patrick Norton. I'm Michael Hand. We'll see you next week on Die Trying. We want you along for the ride. Subscribe at youtube.com slash dietrying. Leave your comments down below and send us photos of your completed projects. Come back next week. DIY fizzy water. And can we carbonate eggnog? Gross. Aw, oh, dude, you're going to love it.